Hi, this is Mr. Judd, and this is what happens when you take a gummy bear and put it in a beaker of hot potassium chloride. All the sugar in the gummy bear incinerates in a very short amount of time. A huge amount of heat and light comes off of the gummy bear. You're releasing its stored energy. You also get some waste products. You get some water coming out, water vapor, and you also get some carbon dioxide. If your body did this when it ate a gummy bear, you'd have a real problem. Fortunately, we have a better system for releasing energy from our food, and that's called cellular respiration. Here's the chemical formula for cellular respiration. This first thing is glucose, and it combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, that's a waste, water, and this thing called ATP. Instead of releasing light and heat from our food, we like our energy in a more usable form, and that is ATP. The chemical reactions of cellular respiration happen inside the cell, inside the mitochondria. If it's just one, it's mitochondrion. To get a handle on what this uh, equation really means, let's move on and take a look at an animation. This is the same reaction. Right here is our glucose molecule. Remember, it's a large molecule that has a lot of stored energy in it. We're gonna try to get that energy out. And we're gonna combine it with oxygen, oxygen gas here, six molecules of oxygen gas. This is what happens. Those molecules are torn apart to form carbon dioxide, six molecules of that, water, six molecules of that, but really what we're trying to get out is the energy, and the energy is stored in a molecule called ATP. ATP is an energy-rich molecule. You can think of it like a charged battery. It can be used to do all sorts of different types of work within the cell. This is ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. This part over here is the adenosine, and the triphosphate is right here, three phosphate groups. ATP is like a charged battery. This last phosphate group can be removed. And when it's removed, it releases its stored energy. That energy can be used to do active transport across a membrane. It can be used to replicate or copy DNA, or it could be used to move an organelle within a cell. It can also be used for muscle contraction or almost anything that requires energy within a cell. Once this uh, last phosphate is removed, the battery is discharged or it doesn't have as much energy. The job of your mitochondria is to take sugar and oxygen, release the energy from them, and restore, put back this phosphate, recharging the battery. So when we say that cellular respiration produces ATP, really what we mean is it adds the phosphate back to it to charge it back up so it can be used again. Remember, the two things that are needed for cellular respiration, the reactants are glucose and oxygen. Let's talk about inside a human, how those two things are obtained. Well, glucose comes from your food. So this right here represents a starch molecule. If you remember, starch is actually just a bunch of glucose molecules linked into a long chain. When you eat, that starch goes into your digestive system and then it breaks apart those glucose molecules and sends them around your body through your bloodstream to all the cells that need the glucose. That is how you get your glucose, by digestion, absorption, and then transport to the cells. Well, how do you get your oxygen? Well, most of us know that when we breathe in, we gather oxygen from the air. Inside of your air sacs, which are called alveoli, right here, there's an exchange of gases that goes on. This is a close-up look down here of what's happening inside those alveoli. Your blood is passing by the alveoli, and oxygen is diffusing into the red blood cells, and they're carrying it away. Carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of you burning your food, is then released into the alveoli. And when you breathe, the carbon dioxide goes out, and when you breathe back in, more oxygen is provided back in. And this process then provides you with the oxygen you need and removes the waste that you make from cellular respiration. That was cellular respiration, and I hope it was helpful.